either. Uh, I want to share a story of a journey. And for me, this journey started many, many years ago. And I would skip like the childhood pictures and get to the interesting part right away. And you know, some journeys are like over and some are in progress and still, still going. And this is one of them. This is like one of them that's still going. Uh, if you want like in real life get from like point A to point B, let's say from the blue cross to the dark cross, you obviously should go through a straight line. But journeys, they like never work this way. You always go to some different places, you learn something, you have some experiences, and then you can like share those experiences. And that's why I'm here. I wanna share what I've learned, share my experiences, and share some knowledge and some insights I gained along the way. And this brings to the subject of my, to the talk, to the talk called like Beyond Lighthouse, measuring JavaScript and website performance by counting CPU instructions. It's like really long title. So my name is Mikolai. I work, I'm a team lead at uh, PackHelp at Design Tech. And at PackHelp, we sell hyper-customized packaging for our clients. And I wanna show you what, what I do at PackHelp. So this is our website. The client comes to website and through the interface, it comes to our online editor. So this is, this is what I'm working on most, most of the time. This online editor where a client can, in a couple of clicks, uh, create some design, something that he really likes, then, like, you know, preview it uh, online, like, go to the purchase, buy it, and goes to, like, a series of uh, check, uh, like checkouts, uh, goes through a series of like processing on the back end, then we convert those designs through some uh, interesting machinery to printable PDF files and can go to the production facilities, to one of the production facilities. From there, like the logistics takes over and delivers to the client, client's door. And to power this machinery, there are almost like 50 developers at PackHub. And this is what I do. And why the subject, like again, performance speed. I personally love speed. I love, uh, this is like the first, first part of the journey, speed. I love when computers work fast. I like when phones work fast, computers work fast, server works fast, like API responses are like no, no snappy. It's cool when things work fast. And um, for many years I've been trying to make things I work on work fast. So this was like where I started like many years ago. And for many years, I've been using time as a benchmark of how fast things are, how fast, how fast computers are. You know, how fast uh, things compile, how fast uh, the page loads, how fast, you know, the API response, how fast, how fast the application starts up. So time has been a very good friend to me and a very good companion for years, and been using time a lot for measuring speed. Also, um, I've been doing web a lot, and uh, I've been using those time benchmarks to measure like the web app and website's performance. Like, also like monitoring memory and stuff like that. Another like companion that I've used was size, like you know, the page size, bundle size, image size, CSS size, JavaScript size, like if you reduce the size, if you reduce the number, amount, like number of kilobytes you have to push through the internet pipe to the user, everything gets better. So size was also a very useful friend along the way. And uh, the tool of the choice was also almost always with all the Chrome DevTools performance tab. You can learn a lot there and it can guide you towards making your things faster. Also, we had like a lot of metrics in the industry. Uh, many, many years ago, uh, probably one of the first things that started was something like Google Page Speed. Many of you remember it. And it kind of measured the, your website performance from like a server standpoint. Then it evolved and we started to see RAM metrics that kind of like, you know, monitored real users like RU, monitor real users and reported this data back to the server so we knew how fast things work on, on real people's like devices. That's cool. 
And then we had some evolution, and like we had some, it's what we call like rail model. We started to think, okay, things should go fast, but they, like the core is experience. What, what would be like better if user could see not a blank screen for two seconds? So start to measure things like user experience. And this was all, all amazing. And then came Lighthouse and like swept the stage. It, was super, it is super amazing tool to capture a wide amount of like performance and speed and experience related uh, data in under like one very nice umbrella. And it's been so successful that people even put uh, achieve 100% light sco Lighthouse score in business contracts. It's like a, such a great tool that <laughs> it's even like in a business language. So, and, and there are good reasons for it. It's uh, available everywhere, it's available on the browser, on the server, there's a lot of tooling, a lot of uh, information out there how to use it. It's really accessible, it produces nice graphics, nice charts, we love nice charts, we love numbers, we love fancy numbers, so it, it's, it's an amazing tool. But this brings to me the second part. We should never stop, we should always stay curious, we should always innovate it, we should always like to push the edge, push the envelope, like try to find, can we do things better? What can we do better? And um, when it comes to Lighthouse, there was like some things that bugged me. Uh, you run uh, the Lighthouse test on your machine three times and you get like a slightly different score, slightly different result. And you say, what the hell? And you run it on your machine, then send it to your colleague, and you have, eight, you have 80 and he has 10. What the hell? And even if you run it multiple times and uh, even like uh, set up yourself some fancy infrastructure, for example, Lighthouse Continuous CI server on your personal server, or buy some resource like Calibre, where they guarantee you that they will run those tests from exactly the same AWS machine with exactly the same network cap limit, you still get charts like this. What the hell? I've been running like the same test, I'm just hitting the rerun button. I, I'm not changing the code. I'm just hitting rerun button. And I get charts like this, like, what the hell? Uh, so nobody's perfect and no tool is perfect and uh, it's meant to guide us but it's not, uh, it's not the exact measure. And I thought, what can, and why, and why would this happen? Because like websites are very complicated. We have things like CDNs, API response times, like you know, caching uh, that can affect that, uh, external libraries, load times, network, uh, network, network congestions. A lot of things may change uh, when you load the website, so, hence it impacts this score. And I thought, can, and when I think about performance, often um, the elephant in the room is JavaScript. JavaScript is huge and uh, it slows things down. What, can we do something, how we can like, improve JavaScript? And roughly like two years ago, I had an idea, can we measure what happens with the JavaScript on the CPU side just to like isolate it and uh, see if we can like peek a deeper insight uh, with having JavaScript and have a deeper insight on uh, how much CPU our JavaScript consumes when it comes to loading. So like my, so this is like another part of my journey, so I said, okay, let's peek into the CPU. So I started peeking into CPU and thinking what's, happen what's happening with JavaScript, right? For example, uh, our browser like downloads it, evaluates it, creates an abstract syntax tree, like converts it to a machine code, then reevaluates it, then like, just in time compiler, analyzes the hot functions and like optimizes them, produces new machine code and like evaluates them. It's like this guy up there, like the CPU is doing a lot of work. And I thought, can we somehow measure this work? And many years ago, probably remember this was a computer called like Deep Blue, who that uh, defeated Kasparov in chess and I checked it had something around 11.5 gigaflops of computing power. And I thought, hmm, how many gigaflops we need to run our JavaScript? <laughs> how many deep blues <laughs> we need to run a website? 
I, because I think right now uh, the phones in our pockets are approaching like teraflops or something. So like many, many deep loads are in, uh, in our pockets and our websites don't load like really fast. Why the hell? And I started to investigate it, can we like deep, can we like count those gigaflopses and there are some things we can count and process on, on the CPU side and those are like CPU cycles. Uh, you know them like by gigahertz on your computer and like CPU instructions, the actual work that CPU is doing during those cycles. And I learned that first of all, CPUs provide a lot of insights into what they're doing, it's first thing, first thing. And the second thing, that Linux, Linux kernel, has an amazing support and a great tooling to pick inside. What I also learned two years ago, that Chrome has developed like a connection between the kernel and the Chrome to communicate and Chrome is pulling data, can, can pull data uh, from the kernel to, uh, can, the, can pull, the, pull the data. So I configured it and run, run this node in GJX with a perf tool and I saw a number of instructions that this program needed to run. And this was like fascinating. And this thing like stuck in my head. Okay, we can have this magic number of instructions our program needs to run. It's not perfectly stable because uh, CPU is like more probab probabilistic than deterministic. We have things like uh, cache hit, cache miss, uh, like, you know, branch miss prediction, stuff like that. But it's a number. Maybe we can do something with it. And uh, I did nothing for a year with that. <laughs> it just stayed in my head. Another year passed and I gave it another thought. What, maybe we can actually do something with it. Um, and here comes like an interesting part, like action. Uh -huh. What I did. So a couple of months ago at Backhelp, uh, we decided to create a team called Speed and we found like a very nice Sonic the Hedgehog logo for it. And the interest in the subject I mean like rekindled. I thought it would be like really nice idea if we could like investigate this subject, uh, whether we could use uh, this instruction counting for website performance analysis. Uh, but first I wanted like to tell you why, why this, why would it matter? Lighthouse is amazing. We should all use it and we should all guide our decision. But maybe, maybe we could have some complementary metric and that would, could give us insight with every commit whether we're moving our code in the right direction. If we make a change, commit it to ACI, see this number go up or go down, maybe it would be like more stable that, than Lighthouse. That's like a hypothesis as I'm trying to test and uh, some tooling I'm trying to develop to, to test it. So first of all, like to make these things happen, we should, what we should do? Uh, we should first enable, uh, like make some changes in the kernel monitoring. So we start this perf event paranoid um, config. And this like, in, like from, from, from yeah, this is like a front-end developer conference. We're going into <laughs> kernel level and uh, V8 source code here. So uh, we configure the kernel to enable the CPU monitoring. The next thing what we do, like we can learn, learn about more what this does, what basically says uh, allow software to monitor uh, CPU, like count CPU cycles and instructions. Next thing we do, we can learn what metrics it, it uh, provides us, the kernel, and this one is like the most interesting. It provides us the number of instructions, meaning like actual amount of work it did to run your process. And Linux has like a great perf tool that you can like run any command, like ls, your program, Ruby, whatever, it's universal. It doesn't matter if you like want to profile your webpack build, you can like let perf webpack build and see the number of instructions you've consumed to run your webpack build. Pretty cool. So you install it in some way, some dependencies, like yada yada. Uh, you know, and then a lot of metrics like start to be like, they're available for you from this, from this point. 
and you can run, you run like this. You run like perf stat, then you select the events that you're interested in from, from the list you've seen before, and then you run your program. And as a result, you have data like that, number of instructions. Interesting, it's the number you like, numbers you saw earlier. So, it's even like you have like some statistical like repeat to see the flakiness, and uh, if you run like your programs a couple of times, you see that like it's pretty stable on the instruction part. It's like oh three percent difference. So it's interesting that this metric might be stable, and this is fascinating. So let's try to run it. First of all, um, I want to show you uh, like a, a very simple website. It's a website where you. Uh, it's a website with a Fibonacci counter, nothing special. Oh yeah, so, sorry. Yep. No, it doesn't work. I don't know why. Like new version or something. Ah, yeah, I'll just. All right, I hope you guys see it well. So it's a um, simple Fibonacci counter. What it does is, yeah. You, in the URL program, you provide the, like the index and it just, so it, it's, a, it's a simple website that can like, you know, generate some load in a CPU. Very, very simple. Next thing that we have is Node.js script to run Puppeteer. Puppeteer and load the provided website via URL. So if we take this input, Terminal, fine. Connected to a live server. I hope it works. Yeah, we've just counted. Uh, we've just connected to. We've counted the number of instructions of this website uh, through Puppeteer. And this is interesting that suddenly we somehow can see how much instructions we consume for running uh, websites. And we can change the number. And probably get a different uh, number. Okay, we had there we had two billion instructions, and here we have like twenty billion instructions. Much more. Uh, yeah, let me show you. It's nothing special. It's just puppeteer. It just says run puppeteer, and that's it. Yeah. Um, What else? Uh, we can try to make this on repeat. And see this table I showed you before. Anyone wants to test their website? All right, uh, and here we have like the Variance of like 09% like very stable when it comes to uh, like those CPU instructions, and um, uh, so it's like it's not the standard deviations like the difference between the minimum and the maximum. So it's like pretty stable. So this makes this metric interesting. So it's like there is a, I see that there is like a potential there at least to try it. So anyone wants to try? It? Let's try Warsaw GS. No, no, we, we'll, I, I don't, I, we'll don't want to wait till tomorrow. Nobody got time for that. Okay, so like uh, Warsaw JS, I think you have three, 33 billions uh, uh, of instructions to run the website. And it's interesting, just interesting. So what else can we do? Um, so we finished like configuring the kernel, we've played a little bit with perf. Now let's go to Chrome. We know this tab, uh, we know this Chrome Performance Dev Tool, and we know all those events. We know that we can export them into JSON, and we know, and uh, Pavel, we showed us how this JSON looks like with all the events data, timestamps, stuff like that. Fascinating. And what the Chrome team did a couple of years ago, three years ago, they said, hey, it would be interesting if we could pull, pull, uh, like, pull, pull the data from the kernel about the instruction number of like hardware instruction cycles we consume 
during the execution and somehow integrate that into this trace file that this, uh, uh, this um, like performance, uh, like Chrome tracing produces. And two years ago, there was like a pull request uh, to Chrome project. It was kind of abandoned. They did it like kind of halfway. They didn't do it to the end. And you know you're really into front end when you're like debugging or like browsing a lot of, and a lot of like C++, uh, Chromium and V8 source code because there were like problems. And I thought like there was something like if you run this on Mikola's machine, just don't run it. And I was like searching in like from code. And it appeared that there were some issues when in headless mode. But if you, what they did is they added a flag, enable thread instruction count to Chrome. And if you run it with this flag, it will decorate the trace JSON with instruction counting if it's enabled in, on Linux in the, in the kernel in Chrome Cast X. And I said, wow, this is so cool. <laughs> I have to try it. So this is what I did. Uh, we can run this both in puppeteer mode or natively. There's like two ways to do it. And uh, this data, like you, you know this data, like all those like uh, evaluate JavaScript, evaluate this function, evaluate that function. Now it's suddenly you decorate it with those and uh, with a with new metric. And this metric is called, oh, first of all, yeah, in those events, you, in those uh, trace files, you can find normal ev event like you know, like uh, DOM constructs loaded with timestamps, the events like I think you know. But the interesting thing is this TI count thing. If you see it, this is like the most interesting. Some, after running some task or events, it records number of instructions uh, CPU consumed to run this process. And you have the information about like process ID, thread ID. Suddenly we have this information. It's not so readily available. It's not really that easily parsable, but it's there and we can play with it. So let's do just that. So I want to show you. So first of all, I showed this Finoche counter. Uh, what I didn't tell you is there's this uh, Node.js file that runs Puppeteer. It also runs Puppeteer with those instructions. Uh, instruction counting turned on and was like producing those JSON files. And those JSON files, they look something like this. Uh, what I showed you. So for example, we have a lot of this TI count metric. And if we scroll, scroll through it, I'm sorry people on, online who like, video encoders would kill it. Press scroll down. We have a lot of those metrics in this trace JSON file. There are some events that don't have this metric and they're like really important, but many of them have. For example, one of the set I've sent in our uh, Fibonacci, we can like set the custom performance mark at like, like uh, Pavel showed before, uh, and they're amazing. And they're also in this trace file. So we can, put the performance mark at the start of our application of operation we're interested in, and then in the end, and count the number of instructions that this operation required. So not even for the whole website, even just for some of the operations. And it's insane. And I wanted to really test it, and I wrote like a couple of parsers for these trace JSON files. Long story short, here is a demo. So this, uh, this table shows us the number of instructions for some, some of those operations in between. So it sneak peeked into those event files, also like three, three traces, uh, and it was like traced from the start to the end of those Fibonacci counting. And I said, wow, this is amazing. We can like have a, a very interesting metric. So, what can we do with it? Uh, this is more or less where we are right now. Uh, I said, okay, this is interesting, but let's, uh, I, I never like 
than to finish the like the task like the half I never like finish uh, the application all at once. I try to like make all the elements like progress at the same time, like to like uh, so the progressive JPEG all, for all the elements. <laughs> so I said, okay, even if we like extract all this data, what can we do with that? I said, well, CI would be a very nice idea. Do you have it? We could extract this data and put it on CI. I thought, okay, let's try it how how it feel to make like a CI configuration. So like created some scripts to test it on our like uh, Hetzner servers. And this is like a uh, code from um, our GitHub action YAML config. Let me show this to you. Oh, by the way, this here is the this PR. Uh, show this to you. Base. Race parsing. Yes, uh, and we've tested the CI setup, and I really liked what I saw because on a CI server, like on our Datadog, I could like see the number of instructions, number of instructions uh, that we've used, and I thought, wow, this is amazing. With every commit I can I make, I can see if I'm w moving in the right direction or not. And uh, so, what's about the future? Uh, and this is not the end of the journey. Uh, there is still a lot of work to do. Our goal is to finish up this tool and tooling, and provide and like share this information, share this knowledge, to open source those like tracing, parsing, uh, publish some guides, some slides, and how-tos, so everyone could at least try to measure how many instructions their like websites or apps consume. And the goal is like not to replace, obviously, Lighthouse or anything like that. The goal to uh, give an opportunity to at least make it and play with it. And this is like what I wanted to share. This idea that it could be another interesting metric that we can use to measure our Performance, to measure performance, to measure speed, and like to enable that with every commit you can see whether you're moving in the right direction or not. So this is it. Thank you for your time. Uh, is there any reason why uh, you measure the instruction count rather than cycles count? Because I imagine uh, the latter would uh, be like more strongly correlated with uh, walk of time. Uh, the question, like uh, the question, was like why measuring in instruction whether or not, and not cycles, right? Uh, as I understand, it's just how the kernel works that the instruction counting is more is more is better measure of actual work done because there could be like wasted cycles due to something else, and they will, will count as used cycles, but uh, because of, like some other like process interruption, but uh, this instruction counting like is more stable. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and uh, if you want, you can like uh, grab me on Twitter, and I might make sure when we like release uh, like you know medium articles or blog posts or this tool goes like open source, I'll just post it on Twitter. So if you want to try it, then this is the way. Amazing. And last question uh, again. I, I, I'd love to give you the microphone, but there is still someone <laughs> with the question, right? Okay. Okay. It's yours. Uh, you're going to get the license. Uh, I'm impressed. Uh, Thanks. So you spoiled that you are going to um, maybe open source that? Yeah. Yes. And uh, are you? Are, how, how are you going? How is this going to m m move further? Because uh, sometimes your code base, especially, so I, I imagine this useful in for me, uh, for example, uh, by executing uh, UI tests. Yes. Uh, but like, I think at least one problem which can happen here is that we, at least we should uh, measure uh, instructions uh, needed for executing each file, maybe, or or something like. 
No, I'm, I'm very interesting. I will be I will be following you. And second question, um, because this is only Linux, and on Windows you could just to, if, if somebody would be interested, you you can do something like DLL injection to Chromium process or or any headless or just open APR because like Vin both Windows and Mac OS they enable like the same capabilities, but no like, no one like wrote code. I, I've like checked it. And like no one just wrote code for Chromium to make uh, to make it available on Windows and uh, Mac OS. Okay, and so also it's doable. And they said like pull requests are welcomed. <laughs> okay, and have you tried just measuring with and this is on Linux just with time and CPU time measurement because this would be much I think easier than configuring kernel, and this would allow everybody to. Mm, because not always on, on shared machines, for example, or in the cloud, you can uh, configure kernel to do that. And I think this, is, this, must be, this might be the biggest uh, problem with, with scaling this in, in clouds or open source projects. So did you try time command? Uh, no, no, I, I didn't like go that and like, yes, this is a problem. You have to have your, like, your, own, uh, you have to have your own hardware and your own kernel to like, configure it. And like for the first part of the question, it's interesting because those those like metrics and insights they give you a lot of even like even single function executions. And if you try really really deep enough and like long enough, you can measure like how many like you know instruction you've consumed to render this specific React component. Just exactly this. You probably need to like hack the React uh, like render element or something to. Um, make those like performance mark to create those performance mark events but you could actually know how many instructions you wasted on rendering divs spans or like avatars uh, could you estimate on how m how much time have you spent on preparing on not on this presentation but generally on working on this topic i'm just curious uh, i would say like 40 hours probably like Thank uh, you. testing yeah nice